All right, I wanted to take you through a few different steps for DJing live in Ableton. I've done a uh, tutorial on how to put a DJ mix together in the arrangement window, but I wanted to get into more of live use in the session window. So in this particular tutorial, I'm going to get into how you set up your cue settings and basically how you use a crossfader. First thing I should let you know is that as far as warping your songs, that's something that you want to do in advance. And I have two tutorials on warping your songs, so go ahead and look at those if you have any questions on that. First and foremost, I'm going to teach you the basic approach with two tracks. With DJing Live in Ableton, you can probably use as many tracks as you like but you're pretty much going to have two tracks as your main setup you know just like having two turntables or whatever so we're setting this up in audio one and audio two and I've dragged two separate tracks in one in each window and basically first thing that you want to figure out how to do is how to cue your track so I can for example listen to this track here while this one's playing in order to cue a track, you are going to need a multiple output sound card, something with more than just stereo out. Otherwise, it's just not going to uh, it's not going to work. So in this case, I don't have any more than stereo outputs, and even if I did, you wouldn't be able to hear the cue in this tutorial. So what I'm doing is. I'm going to set the main output to the left speaker and then I'm going to set the cue output to the right speaker. So basically you can kind of see what they're both doing. Like I said before, this is just for the tutorial. You're going to want to have more than two outputs. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing that you're going to want to do is over in this area here you're going to see you've got a cue out section here and this is where you would find all your multiple outs so let's say you had six or eight outputs you could come over here and choose output three and four for your cue and then your main output would be one and two in this case I'm gonna choose output two which is gonna be your right speaker and then the master out I'm just gonna put to the left speaker which is gonna be output one and then on both of my tracks I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to one and assign this to one as well just like so now normally when you set it up properly these outputs would be uh, one and two and your cue would be set up to three and four or whatever what you'll notice now is since I've set this cue to its own output this has changed here to cue and this right here now becomes your headphone volume so if I want to let's say cue this track right here I'll show you I'll bring this down here and now we're cueing but you're also hearing it in the main speaker because the volume is up so if the volume is down you're only going to hear it in your right speaker same thing over here. Just like so. So let's say this this song here. So what you hear in the left speaker would actually be what the audience would hear. And what you hear in the right speaker is what you're hearing until you decide to go ahead and mix this one in. And then they will come into... Now they're both playing in the left speaker, so I'll turn off the cue. And you've got both songs playing. So let me stop this for a second. Because that's essentially uh, how it works with the volume. Now, you could also work with with a crossfader. And in that case, you would just go ahead and leave both of your volumes up and you would assign 
here's your crossfader over here, follow my arrow. Down here is the actual crossfader. Goes all the way to the left and right. Now, the right side is going to represent A. So, I, excuse me, the left side is going to represent A. So, you want to put your, your first audio track on A and your second audio track on B. That way, if I go ahead and play both of them, right now I'm hearing audio one because I got my crossfader set over here. And then as I blend, you'll hear the other track starting to come in and now it's starting to take over. Just like so. So let me go ahead and stop that. And what you're going to want to do, you're not going to want to use the crossfader with your mouse. You would go ahead and assign that to one of the knobs on your controller would be the best approach to use. And you would just simply hit MIDI and grab that controller and then twist the knob that you want to control it, turn it off, and now when I twist that knob, I got sm smooth transition. I'll get a little bit more into MIDI setup on another tutorial. I think this is going to be a four-part tutorial. But essentially this is the basic way that uh, you set up for cueing and, and set up your crossfader you don't just have to assign one track to A and one track to B. You could have as many tracks as you want essentially, but I'm trying to set you up for the easiest DJ approach and one that's most common to use. What some people might do with these other tracks is they'll actually load all the songs that they want in their playlist and then they'll unclick this in and out here and then you you have all the selection so if you're playing for an hour or two hours you might have 20 tracks to choose from in here you could queue those up over here and see what song you want to play and then just drag it into your audio one or your audio two as necessary and that's going to be it for part one of this tutorial